Come on, choir, step up to the mics real quick. Let's warm up with all the way. Girl, please. Here we go in one voice, say it. Let him lead you. Let him lead you. Stand up to your feet. Let's begin to worship God. We worship you, God. It's cold in here. Give us some heat. Please. 
turn the heat on in Jesus' name. <laughs> we worship you. Whoever turned on.
the Lord is our strength. We are strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Welcome to our morning worship service. It's all about Jesus Christ. Just lift your hands in the sanctuary. Give Him some praise. Give Him some honor. Give Him some glory because He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. Father, we worship you. Father, we praise you. Father, we bless you. This is the day the Lord has If you're joining us on live stream, you are welcome. It's going to be an amazing day. So put your seatbelt on. The word of God is going to minister to your soul and to your spirit. We're going to start with Psalms 32, verse 8. The word of God says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Yeah. Father, we thank you that you gave your word to teach us, to lead us, and to guide us in the way in which we should go. We give you all the praise today, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome our pastor, Pastor Alvin Simpkins. Oh, God is good. Come on, somebody put your hands together. Let's just praise the Lord, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am, the living of the valley, the bright and the morning star. Somebody shout hallelujah. Father, thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your blessings and all your favor. We come to worship you on this day. We come to say thank you for all your help. And most of all, we come to say we need help. Somebody raise your hand and say help. Thank you for your divine help in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Turn around and give that person a hug as Minister Darren Nidio comes and lead us in prayer and bring a blessing over all of our children. We want all of our kids, if you're under the age of 25, come on down. Joy is here. Joy. Oh, joy. Come on down. Thank the Lord for all of our little ones. Clap your hands while they are coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of our sons and all of our daughters. Come on in closer. The Lord is good. Just no good kids and no accident. You got to pray over them every day. Somebody say every day. Every day. Raise your hands in this minister. Lead us in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Lord, we worship you today, Jesus. Father God, we come to you this morning thanking you for your goodness, your mercy, and all of your grace. Father, we thank you for bringing us to this place today, Lord God, to lift up our children before you. Father, we bring each and every one of them before your altar today, God, asking you, Lord God, to continue to watch over them, Lord. Lord, we need you, Father God, to send your warrior angels about them each and every day, God, Lord, to fight the battles in the spirit realm. Lord, the spirit realm that they don't even see, God. Father, we thank you right now that you are covering them, Lord God, with the angels of protection, God, each and every day, God, while they're at school, while they're at play. God, wherever they are, God, let your angels protect them and guard them from all hurt, harm, and danger, God. Father, we know that you have ordered their steps. So, God, we just ask that you will continue to order their steps, continue to move them in the path that they must go, God. You have already planned it out for them, God. Father, let your Holy Spirit speak to their hearts and their minds that they may hear your voice, God. Give them the ears to hear, Lord God. Give them the ears to hear your word, God, that they may hear the truth, that the truth may set them free, God. In the name of Jesus, we bind every spirit every evil demon every assignment that the enemy has passed against them we bind it by the blood of the lamb we bind it by the blood of the lamb the blood of jesus we plead it from the top of their head to the soles of their feet god they need you right now god they need you lord god oh lord jesus we ask that you would teach them and show them lord god Lord, they need you. To, they need to hear you, Lord God. In this day and age, God, they need to know you as their personal Savior. Oh, God, we 
we just bring them before you this morning. Humbly, Lord God. Lord, you said that to seek you in all things. So we're seeking you right now, God, for wisdom, for knowledge, for understanding, for compassion, for love in their hearts and their minds, God. Lord, we know they got to go through the trials of life. But you said you will never leave them nor forsake them. So we're standing on your word, God, because you promised it in your word that me and my house will serve you all the days of our lives. So, Father, we thank you. We proclaim it right now in the name of Jesus that they are saved and delivered and healed and walk in divine health in the name of Jesus. So we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you because you're so good to us. You're a mighty God. You're an awesome God. Thank you for our children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Come on and put your hands all the way in the air. Let's pronounce the blessing. Everybody say it with me. Say, Lord, we pronounce the blessing over our children. Come on, say it one more time. Say, Lord, we pronounce the blessing over our children. They are blessed. Say it again. They are blessed. One more time. They are blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for the choir as they minister to us on this wonderful day. And now all the little kids can go, but the youth stay in. Thank you. Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord this morning. Ain't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Ain't it good? I know that ain't right, but ain't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. Tell it.
married to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for dying for us. Somebody shout the blood. Come on, shout the blood. One more time. The blood. The blood of Jesus over every area of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. Would you welcome First Lady? You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Welcome First Lady as she give us the announcements. Good morning. Good morning. First thing we need to do is hit share on the video. This is going to be an amazing service to share. If you have your service on Emmanuel Christian Center Facebook, hit the share video. It's going to minister to family and friends and all of that, all that you know. So hit the share button. But do we have any first-time visitors today? If you're here for the very first time, we would like to welcome you. Can we put our hands together? Just lift your hand in the air. Our ushers have a packet. Well, God bless you. We recognize you there. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Can we give them another hand of welcome? Thank you so much, and may God bless you. We are so excited to have you today. Don't forget, couples, sign up for our couples event, which will be no November the 10th. That's going to be a jam-packed night full of great tools for marriage to help you to just be stronger and greater in your marriage. Sign up today. I think our ushers have a card where you can just scan the QR code and sign up or just go out to the table right after service. Sister Angie Batiste will be out there ready to sign you up or go on our website, eccdiver.net, and sign up. The earlier you sign up, the more prizes you are eligible for. So you want to sign up right away so that you can be in there to get all of those wonderful gifts. Uh, we have our prayer shut in October 27th to the 28th. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an amazing night. Uh, Minister Tracy is uh, handling Stand up, Minister Tracy. Go by and see her. Give her your prayer requests. They're going to be bombarding heaven that night for all of your prayer requests, praying over them. Fill out a card, fill out a slip, give it to them for that night of prayer. Uh, men's Monday morning Bible study is tomorrow, 5.30 a.m. We do have a new Zoom link for it, so use the latest email for it. Don't use an old email. Use the latest one so that you'll be able to get right into that service tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The month of October is when we remember and we remind each other, if you are a survivor of breast cancer, please stand up. We just want to honor you and recognize you today. I know we had many ladies. Let's, let's put our hands together. We're so excited for them. Don't sit down. The pastor is going to pray over you. As a matter of fact, we want every lady to stand. It is also a reminder to get your mammogram. Get your testing. Make sure because you want to learn on the front end, but God is always with us. We're going to ask the pastor to come and pray over us. Amen. You are a survivor and God is good. Somebody say amen. Men, let us all stand and just raise our hand with our ladies. Every man standing, every lady standing. You are special to God's heart. Somebody say amen. Jesus stopped dying on the cross to take care of his mother. Ladies, you are special. And God has a plan for your life. And don't let nobody put you down. No matter what they say, you are special. Before you, God says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you had a plan for your life. And you're not here by accident. Elbow somebody and say, I'm no accident. Oh, elbow somebody else and say, I'm no accident. Stretch your elbow all the way up and let's pray. Father, thank you for all the wonderful people your miracle working power, how you have touched the lives of these wonderful ladies. And I just thank you for life. Somebody say life. Thank you. You have the finest say. In Jesus' name we pray. The diagnosis did not take them out. They are still here. Somebody say still here. Somebody say still here. And we plead the blood. Raise your hand and say the blood. The blood over their life. We speak life. Let them live out all their days with health and strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. God bless you. Turn around and give somebody a hug and tell them I'm still here. I am still here. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. 
God is a good God. He loves you and everything is going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. Thank you for being here this morning. We want you to know that God is a good God. Men, get up in the morning. Get on the new link. Don't go to an old email. Go to the new one because we're going to be talking about communication. Do you know a lot of families fail because we don't know how to communicate? We say the wrong thing at the wrong time in the wrong situation. You got to learn how to communicate. So we're going to be talking about communication. The big three killers in a marriage is communication, sex, and money. And so you have to know how to communicate. And then we're going to be talking about that. We're going to give you a few lists of things, ways that you can rap to your wife. Oh, it's a lot of y'all don't forgot how to rap. You just go to work every day. You go to, you know, you eat, come home, eat, and go to bed. But just know you got that lady because you were rapping to her. And uh, is there any ladies that will say amen? amen? Saying good things to him. So we got a list for you tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. Somebody say amen. amen. And just know God is going to bless your life. Join the choir as, as, as we worship the Lord in this new uh, next dimension. Join the choir and God will bless your life. Somebody say, I am blessed. I am blessed. And I am blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. Join the choir and God will bless your life and he'll help you. Sing to the Lord. David sang to the Lord and God blessed his life and God helped him. Don't sit there on your gift. You are sitting on your miracle. Just know, get up, get in the choir and sing to the Lord. Somebody say amen. I sang and they put me in the back of the choir, but I didn't care. I just wanted to sing to God. Somebody say amen. And God will move you to the front. Somebody say amen. God loves you. You know, uh, let us all stand. Minister Darren Nidio and his wonderful wife, he just sang that song. They, uh, he's retired and she's retired. And they are moving to Texas. And we are going to miss them, you know. And, but we know that God has already given them opportunities. Come on over, sir. And, uh, you know, God has uh, given them opportunities to, mo to move south and stay warm. They live it up in the mountain where the bears come out in the cold weather. And he said he's had enough of that cold weather. And so uh, they're going south. But God has given them opportunities to minister. And so just know we are so excited. We're going to miss you. We're going to miss you, man. God bless you. And, uh, but thank you for serving. Oh, they'll be back in June. So there go. There'll be snow bunnies. They'll be back in June. Well, awesome. Well, I, I just want you to know that, you know, God, you know, God bless you and the Lord will help you if you'll just get up and sing and worship the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. And so his wonderful family, God has blessed them and they, he, he's fought some devils, but God is a good God. Somebody say amen. amen. And so, you know, pray for them as they go. He just buried his dad. And so just know, but God is faithful. Somebody say Amen. amen. Can I get a few ministers to come and stand with him this morning and just come on up a little closer? Uh, and uh, we just want you to know, sir, that we love you. Served in the military, what, two terms in Afghanistan? Two terms in Afghanistan, protecting our great nation. You know, he was a sheriff for how many years? 21 years a sheriff. I hope you didn't get stopped by him. <laughs> but anyway, we, we, we honor you. We honor your service. We honor your family. God has his hand on your life. Man, get down there and find somewhere to minister. I know he's already opened doors. I know he has. Because God never take his ministers from one place and leave them out in the cold. I know he's giving you a place. So go in with all you got. Let us know we'll come down and help you. Somebody say amen. amen. We just stretch your hand toward this wonderful man and woman of God. Father, we send them with our love. We send them with your blessings. You have been so good to them. You have been so good to them. Thank you for the soldier. That he'll be a soldier down there. Leading men and women to the Lord. We just thank you now. Let your hand rest upon him. Oh, the blood. Somebody help me say the blood. We send them with our love. We send them with your blessings. We surround them with prayer. And we plead the blood over every one of their grandchildren over all of their children may the blessing that's upon their life flow to their children and their children's children generation to come thank you for the blood we plead the blood over their life somebody shout the blood open doors 
spiritual doors for them to minister. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say, Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness and all of his mercy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God is a good God. He loves you. Somebody say amen. 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 God loves you and everything is going to be all right. Would you clap your hands for the choir this morning as they minister to us? God is a good God. He loves us and everything is going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. Say it again. It's going to be all right. God is a good God. He loves you. Hey, hey, just because Minister Nadio is retired don't mean he's tired. You just retire. You ain't tired though, right? We got some energy down on the inside. Come on, Minister Teresa. Let's, let's shout to God. I've been running for Jesus a long time. I'm not tired yet.
Stretch your elbow all the way up and everybody say, Lord, thank you for Jesus who died for me on the old rugged cross. I am blessed in Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. God is a good God. Stand up, take your Bible and go with me to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Today, today as we do the last part of the way, the truth, and the life. God is a good God. He loves you. I want to ask my wife if she'll read John chapter 14. We're going to start reading at verse number 1. And we're going to read all the verses all the way down to verse number 6. God is a good God. Somebody say, the Lord loves me. Oh, we're in the right place. Oh, the atmosphere is full. We can sense his presence. Oh, ask him for what you need. Ask for what you want. Declare what's on your life. Ask for the healing you need. The atmosphere is charged. Stretch your elbow all the way up and say, Lord, I sense your presence. Come on, say it with me. Say, Lord, I sense your presence. Meet every need. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Somebody say amen. Amen. John chapter 14, verse number one. Please read. Let not your heart be troubled. Oh. Ye believe in God. Thank you. Believe also in me. Thank you. In my Father's house are many mansions. Yes. If it were not so, uh -huh. I would have told you. Yes. I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, yes. I will come again and receive you unto myself. You are. That where I am, yes. there ye may be also. And whether I go, yes. ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, yes. how can we know the way? Yes. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. I am the way. The truth and the life. And the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Father, stretch your elbow up and let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word today. Pray your blessings over our lives. We ask that you would lead us and guide us. Forgive us. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts, may it be acceptable in your sight on this day. Thank you. Minister to the heart of every person that is here. Every soul that is present. Pray that you'll minister to them in a special way. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. You're worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, we give you. We worship. Come on, every heart. You are. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, every heart. We give you all the Lord. Oh, you're in the presence of the Lord. Open your heart and sing to the Lord. Every heart. You are worthy to be. Come on, church. Come on, lift your voice. We Come give on. you all. We give you all. Thank God for his goodness. Raise your hand with me and say, Lord, you're worthy of all the praise. Come on, every man, help me, every lady. Say, Lord, I repent of all my sin. Thank you for your help, all your blessings, and favor. You're worthy of all the praise, the honor and the glory thank you for all that you are in our lives we honor you we sense your presence and we thank you for visiting us thank you for stopping by us thank you for all that you are in our lives in Jesus name I pray somebody say amen amen bless you you may be seated in the house of the lord god is a good god he loves you and just know god loves you the bible says i am the way the truth and the life and so this morning the question on the table is where will you spend eternity where will you spend eternity this morning, we have to know that the truth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, makes the difference in our lives. But the question on the table is, where will you spend eternity? And you have to know, that is the real question. We're not here just to sing. We're not here just to play church. We are here because we know that we have a soul. We understand that there is life after life. Somebody say amen. That this is not the end. 
So the question on the table today is, where will you spend eternity? Somebody say amen. Thank you, Elder. God is a good God and he loves you. Somebody say amen. And so you have to know, you have to ask yourself the question, am I going to spend eternity with God? John, in his book, was very clear about Jesus' identity. If you're not reading, I want you to read the book of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John was very personal. He was very clear about following Jesus, and he was very close to Jesus. And so Jesus, would, whenever Jesus would, would, this, would express his identity, John wrote it in his book. He said, I am the bread of life. His identity, John wrote it. He said, I am the light of the world. John wrote it. Somebody say amen. amen. Every time Jesus would declare who he was, John would write it. He said, I am the door. In John chapter 10 and verse number 9, John wrote it. He said, I am the good shepherd. Oh, I look out for the sheep. In John chapter 10 and verse number 11. See, you got to know who you are. And you got to know where you are going. You got to know where you are going. None of us live all, all, always. We all must go to eternity. Somebody say amen. John chapter 15 and verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine. And so we have to know that God helps us every day to stay connected and bear good fruit. Somebody say good fruit. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14 and verse number 6. Jesus tells us who he is, and John records it. Somebody say, I am blessed. And so we have to know, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, and then he said, I am the life. Somebody say amen. And every day, we have to know, we have to live our lives by truth. Let the truth live your life for you. The, tr your, the truth of your life should tell us who you are. The truth of your life should tell us who you are. And so you have to know, live your life by truth. Somebody say truth. And there are things you have to be aware of and you have to stay away from. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, just be aware. Some people you can't hang out with, you got to be aware of them. They'll mess up your life. Somebody say, be aware. Somebody say, be aware. Be aware of people that will lie to you. You catch them in lies, and then they still want you to believe them. Be aware. Somebody say, be aware. You got to be aware as you go through life. Of as we watch commercials on television, and they tell us the same commercial over and over and over again. Be aware that when they, tell, they, they send you the commercial and you go down and buy the burger and they say, this is the best burger. And you go down and buy and it's not the same. It doesn't look the same. The people don't act the same when they're eating it. Somebody said, be aware. You, as you go through life, you got to go through life with your eyes open. You got to be aware. Somebody said, be aware. And Jesus tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Tell your neighbor, be aware. Therefore, is none coming to the Father but by me. He says, nobody get to the Father. Be aware of, of religions and be aware of people that lie to you. Somebody say amen. But it's by receiving and living for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the difference. In the life of the believer. And so you have to know that John 3.16, for God so loved the world, and whosoever believed in him should not what? Perish, but have what? Everlasting life. You got to be aware and don't just live your life any kind of way. And you have to live your life knowing that Jesus is the only way. Somebody say it's the only way. We live in a society where they tell you you can serve this God, you can serve that God. No, be aware. 
Somebody say, be aware. You got to be aware and know that Jesus is the only way. Somebody say, he's the only way. He's the only way. He's the life, the author, and the giver of eternal life. Where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? Where will you go? None of us are going to live forever. But you have to know that by his doctrine, he told us and he showed us the way. By the way he lived, he showed us the way. By sending the Holy Spirit to help us, he showed us the way. Somebody say, he is the way. The truth and the life. You got to be aware. Somebody say, be aware. And don't live your life living any kind of way. Don't live your life just doing any kind of way, doing anything. It's dangerous. That boy, your neighbor said, neighbor, it's dangerous. It's dangerous just to live any kind of way. It is dangerous. You know, it's dangerous for you to never come by God's house and say, Lord, I love you. It is dangerous for you to never tell God thank you for all his many blessings in your life. It is dangerous for you to never give him praise when you know he gave you the house you live in, when you know he gave you the car you drive, when you know he gave you the job you have, when you know he gave you a good boss. That ble It's dangerous to not to say thank you. Somebody say thank you. Somebody say thank you. It is dangerous for us to live any kind of way. And you have to know that it's not anything other than Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. It's dangerous to live any kind of way. It's dangerous to do drugs. It'll mess up your life. It's dangerous. It's dangerous to go out every weekend drinking. You get a DUI and end up behind jail cells. It's dangerous to fight with your wife every week, arguing over every little thing. It's dangerous to not pray and ask God for help. Somebody say, help. It's dangerous. Elbow your neighbor say, neighbor, stay out of danger. It's dangerous for you and your family to fight and argue and pray and not pray. It is dangerous. Somebody say it's dangerous. And so you have to know. See, the Pharisees argued about the law. They didn't realize that Jesus was the way. Standing right in front of them, they didn't realize that he had come. They missed the hour of visitation. And so you have to know, don't miss your hour of visitation. Don't try to live your life on the edge some people like to live on the edge they like to live on the edge of living any kind of way they like to live on the edge of doing what they want it's dangerous elbow your neighbor says it's dangerous don't live your life on the edge some couples like to live on the edge of arguing and fighting it's dangerous find your place and stand on solid ground Live in safety because at the end of the day, we all are going to meet the Lord. Somebody say it's dangerous. Somebody say it's dangerous. And when you know it's dangerous, then you got to ask God for help. Somebody say help. Every day, we have to ask the Lord for help. Somebody say help. Every day, never get to the place to where you think that you can make it by yourself. You need God's supernatural help. Somebody say, help. John 8 and 12 said, then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. And he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Not just light in this life, but light of life for eternal life. Somebody say, I'm saved. Jesus told him in John chapter 11, verse number 26, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, never die, never die. You live on forever. 
you die on this side, but you live on the other side. Somebody say, I live. Jesus wants us to know that, that there is a place that he had prepared for us where we serve him and worship him and we will live with him in eternity. See, don't take it lightly. Don't take your spirituality lightly. Elbow your neighbor and say, don't take it lightly. Don't argue and fuss with people. And don't be going to some places. Some places you cannot go. Some places you cannot go. Men, some places you cannot go. Some places you got to stay out of. It's dangerous. Keep out of them. Let me just help somebody. You got to stay out of the strip club. Oh, I felt a ripple run through the audience. You got to stay. I know, lady, you making money, but you are selling your soul to the devil. And Jesus said, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Don't sell your soul. Stay out of the club. Stay out of the club. Or they're having fun and turning it up. Doing all kind of things. Somebody say, stay out. You got to stay out of the club. And you have to know that there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end is a way of death. You got to follow Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus. John chapter number 10 and verse 10. Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to what? Steal and to what? Kill and to what? destroy but he said i have come that you might have what life and have it what more but stay out somebody say stay out stay out of the club stay out of some people's houses stay out somebody say stay out when we were raising our kids i didn't let my kids go over to everybody's house because i didn't know who all was coming over there and it was dangerous for my boys and you'll be amazed at how little boys get messed up as well as girls. Somebody say amen. So you got to stay out. Somebody say stay out. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Stay out of some places. You can't go to some places. You just can't go. You don't go to some places. And you have to know. You got to stay out of there. You know where you're going that you shouldn't be. It's going to mess up your eternity. It's going to mess up your life. You got to stay out of it. Somebody say, stay out of it. John chapter 14. Job chapter 14 in verse 14. Job chapter 14. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. All the days of your appointed hour. Live your life in the right place with the right people. Doing the right thing. You got to stay out. Somebody said, stay out. I remember my coaches told us well, years ago when we were playing football, don't go to certain parties. Stay out of them. Don't go to certain parties. Well, some of our teammates didn't listen. Some of them went to the parties. And they were in there, turn it up. Just having a good time with all the pretty girls. And all of a sudden, a fight started. See, back then, they didn't shoot the way they shoot now. A fight broke out. And the, when the fight broke out, people started to run in. And one of them got trampled. But if he had not been there, like the coaches told him, he wouldn't have got trampled. You, you got to tell your kids to stay out of trouble. Stay out of certain places. You don't go to certain places. Somebody say, stay out and know that your life is at stake because in that moment, you might not be ready to die. You might not have a chance to say, Lord, I'm sorry. You might not have a chance to say, Lord, forgive me. So if you're in the wrong place with the wrong people doing the wrong thing, then trouble can happen in your life. And where will you spend eternity? Ask your neighbor, where will you spend eternity? 
Where will you spend eternity? You got to stay out of certain places. Somebody says, stay out. Somebody says, stay out. This is not the end of our lives. We live on. And Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the what? Life. And then God says, I want all men to be saved. I don't want you to end up on the wrong side of eternity. All men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. Your job is not the end. I know you got to work your job. I know you got to work your job. I know you, you, you got to pay bills because money is the exchange in this life. But you have to know prayer is the exchange in eternal life. And you have to know, I know you got to work your job, but don't forget about eternity. Don't forget where you will spend eternity. Don't forget to stop by God's house and say, Lord, I'm just checking in. I repent. I'm sorry. I rededicate my life. I reconnect with you because eternity awaits me. Don't get so caught up in your job. I'm working so I can't come to church. Your job is going to replace you. Not when you die, but when you get sick. They got somebody else to replace you. Somebody else say amen. amen. And so don't get so caught up in the living this life that you forget about eternity. Eternity is real. Raise your hand with me and say, Lord, say it again. Lord, I am your child. Say it again. Say, Lord, I rededicate. I recommit my life my family, all that I have, to Jesus. Then Saturday morning, Israel woke up in a quiet morning. But then all of a sudden, the bombs started blowing. People died. Some died in their sleep. Before you go to bed, you must say, Lord, I'm sorry. Before you close your eyes, cross over into a deep sleep you must make sure that you're right with the Lord they bombed them and some didn't wake up before you go to sleep turn off that scary movie before you go to sleep turn off that bad TV show before you go to sleep just say Lord thank you for another day you allowed me to live one more day and I am Bless. Somebody say, I am blessed. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his what? Only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him should not what? Perish, but have what? Everlasting life. And so you have to know, you got to pray for them. You got to pray for them. Israel is God's time clock. What happens there, you pay attention to what could happen here. Somebody say amen. amen. Israel is God's time clock. So we need, that's why the Bible says that pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Every day at noonday prayer, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Every day we say, Lord, bless Israel. Help them. Somebody say amen. amen. And see, not only life in this world, but we must think of life in the next realm. Somebody say, I am blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. We don't want to become prey to the enemy in this world and lose our eternity, lose our soul. What will a man or woman give in exchange for their soul? Some sell out. Some give their life just to be able to sing on a platform. Some give their life eternally just to be able to be a star in a movie, which means nothing. Some give their life just to have their name in lights. That means nothing on eternity. But you got to make sure that you are in, in relationship with Jesus. Somebody say, I am saved. Say it again, I am saved. 
John 1, 1 John chapter number 5 and verse number 1. 1 John 5, 5 and 1 says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. You got to believe that he is the Christ. And everyone that loveth him, that begat, that, that he begat, loveth him. Also that is begotten of him. That you are part of God's heart. Somebody say, I'm a child of the king. Say it again, I'm a child of the king. Say it again, I'm a child of the king. Don't get so caught up on this side. Don't get so caught up in traveling that you don't think enough of eternity to leave your tithe. Uh-oh, it's got quiet up in here. Don't get so caught up and wanting to go on a cruise that you use your tithe money for your cruise. Don't get so caught up in this life that you say that church stuff don't matter to me. Whether you believe it or not, it's true. Because eternity is real. Somebody say it's real. For God so loved the world that he gave his what? Only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not what? Perish but have what? Everlasting life. Don't get so caught up. That you got to have extra money just to live the good life. I am not doing anything. I'm not giving nothing to the church. I'm just trying to help somebody. See, I'm going to be held accountable for you. So I'm going to tell you the truth. That it doesn't matter. I'm going to make sure that I pay my tithe. Because I want to make sure that I'm right when I get to the gate on the other side. It's appointed under man to die once. Then after death comes what? Judgment. God's going to say, what did you do to help with my house? What did you do to help win souls? What did you do to help the lost? What did you do for the down and out? And then he says in Matthew 7, 21, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. You live your life for the flesh. And not for the spirit. I am here not to preach to you. I am here because I know eternity is real. And I have to give an account for my life. And therefore, I'm going to make sure that I, my life is right. So raise your hand with me, everybody. Say, Lord, I am sorry for any sin in my life. I am blessed. The Bible is very clear about eternity, that we must believe in Jesus Christ. Maybe you left the Lord. Maybe you said, maybe somebody hurt you. And that's what a lot of people are saying. I ain't going to church. Somebody, them people, they got on my last nerve. I'm not going to church. You know, the pastors say stuff. No matter what they, let me tell you, I've been in church most of my life from a teenage boy. If they could have run me out, I would have, I would have been gone. I wanted to sing in the choir. And Jordan, they told me to go to the back of the choir. Now, I know I wasn't bad as Deacon Jones that was on the front of the choir. Everybody talked about him. When I was an usher, they told me, I'm not going to sit where that guy sat, where, where you want me to sit. You know, so, and there have been people that have always said stuff. They keep you out of God's house. You watching me by live stream. You are home because somebody in church hurt you. My eternity is more important to me than what they said to me. They said to me. They said to me. I was out playing football on a scholarship. That was God's way of paying my way to college. They said, you going to hell. Out there in the world. But then none of them had education. But then there was a group of old ladies in the church. You know the story. They came up to me with white gloves on. Handed me $5. And said, baby, keep on keeping on. Come on back to church next Sunday. We're going to be looking for you in the choir. We're going to save your, role, your, your aisle for the ushers. And they encouraged me. 
And I'm here today because somebody encouraged me. I am here today because somebody told me to keep on keeping on. And when I messed up, the Holy Spirit said, go back. All of us have been in a place till we didn't want to go back to church. All of us have done things where we felt guilty because our conscience made us feel bad. But the Holy Spirit says, beware, go back. Somebody say, go back. How many of you, the Holy Spirit told you to go back to church? Go back to church. Go back. You online. I know you're online. The Holy Spirit is telling you to go back. The Bible says, God says, my eyes will be open and my ears will be attentive to the prayers that are made in this place. God hears your prayers when you come to church. I'm going to find my way to God's house because I need my prayers answered. Somebody say, I am blessed. Go back to church. Elbow your neighbor say, go back. Somebody say, go back. The devil want to run you out of God's house. He doesn't want you here. Doesn't want you clapping your hands. Doesn't want you singing in the choir. He wants you to just sit down and say, they're going to look at me funny if I get up and sing. Yes, they're going to look at you. Give them something to look at. Go back. Somebody say, go back. Be aware your eternity is at stake. Be aware. The devil is telling you, oh, you don't sound as good as Minister Teresa. You don't sound as good as Minister Jordan. Who cares? Do it for an audience of one. Do it for the Lord. Do it for the Lord. When you do it for the Lord, I don't care what other people say. God is my source. Somebody said, the Lord is my source. I'm not preaching up here for you. I'm preaching for the Lord. I'm preaching for the Lord. I'm not preaching for you. I'm preaching the Lord. Call me. If I could do something else, I probably would. But he called me. And then he has sustained me for almost 20 years. The Lord had kept me alive. I'm not here because I'm so good. I'm here because of the anointing. I'm here because of God's sustaining power. I'm going back to church. You can't run me out. You can't put me out. The Lord brought me here. I'm going back. Elbow your neighbors and neighbor. Go back to church. Go back to God's house. Your blessings are in the house. Somebody say, I am blessed. Somebody say, go back. Raise your hand with me and say, Lord, teach me how to go back to your house. Say it again. Say, Lord, teach me how to stay in your house. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say, hallelujah. I know people that left God's house. Their life was doing great. They had money. They had a great job. They were doing well. But they got out because somebody looked at them funny. Somebody said something to them. And they got mad. And they, I, I, I don't need to go to church. They left. Then when I saw them at Walmart, hi, Pastor, how are you? And I said, oh, how are you? How you doing? I'm not doing too good. Couple made $250,000. Left the church. First thing I saw him, when I saw him at the store, he said, Pastor, I'm divorced with my wife. Now in the church, you guys were doing good. So I didn't want to get into his business because the more questions you ask, the deeper you get. And I just said, oh, I'm so sorry. He said, I'm living in an apartment trying to find me a different job. There is an anointing that comes on your life. 
Let me help somebody. There's a gathering anointing that happens when God's people come together. There's a gathering presence. There's a gathering spirit that comes when we all come together. God's presence is there. God, you feel chills down your spine. You feel something in the atmosphere. You said, I ain't going to clap my hands. And the next thing you know, you're clapping your hands and you're standing up on your feet. There's a presence that comes. There's an anointing that comes. And God will bless your life. Find your way to God's house. I know couples that were fighting in the parking lot. But when they got in God's house, all of a sudden, she rolled up on him. He stretched his arm and pulled her close. Why? So I asked my wife, did you see them? They said they were going their separate way. But did you see them in church? She was all up on him. He was all up on her. Why? Because the gathering anointing had filled the room. And their attitude didn't matter no more. Now, love. Somebody say love. Somebody say love. It's all about eternity. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it wrong. It's all about eternity. That's why we pray over our kids. We don't want, to miss, we don't want them to miss eternity. And we want you to know that God loves us. Jesus said in John 6, 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, and the bread that I would give by my flesh, which I would give for the life of the world. Oh, man, he's the light. He's the bread of life. Somebody say he's the bread of life. Somebody say he's the bread of life. And when you know that, you can believe. Somebody say, I believe. Some people don't believe nothing. People, they, they don't believe in, in nothing. They don't believe that God is good. They don't believe, I don't believe in that stuff. You got old people saying it now. You got old people saying, I don't believe in that stuff. You don't have to believe. I know it's true. Some things you know are true. And Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am what? The lie. Some things are true whether you believe it or not. And so you got to make up in your mind, I believe. Somebody say, I believe. Somebody say, I believe. John chapter eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he what? Live. You got to believe. Somebody say, I believe. I believe. He said, I'm the resurrection and I'm the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Somebody say everlasting life. It's not the end on this side. Don't spend your life just living here. Make sure you keep eternity in your focus. You know, as I said, I've been to Gaza where they're fighting in Israel. I've been to Gaza. It's a great area. Seashore. It's a nice area. But you know, there were people there today that went to bed on this side and they woke up on the other side. That's why you don't know what could happen in America when Russia, China, North Korea are combining. They could all build a weapon that could reach all the way to our shores and get all of us. Don't think that it's not, it's not in my backyard, so it don't matter. It matters to me. I got a pastor friend over there. You know, Pastor David Pellegrini, you know him, he was our tour guide. He texted us, texted me this morning and said, pray for us. We need your prayers. He said, several young men in my church are going to war. And they may not return. See, don't take it lightly. 
We need to pray for our soldiers in America. We need to pray for them. And we need to pray for our leadership in America. When they don't want to feed our soldiers and put money in their pocket, something is wrong. The blood. Somebody help me shout the blood. When we come to the place so when we forget about eternity, then we've lost our sense of focus. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he what? Live. And so you have to know, there's life after life. Somebody say, there's life after life. Somebody say, life after life. This is not the end of your life. We are just pilgrims passing through. Woo, we're just pilgrims passing through. That's why that gray hair on your head reminds you there's an end in sight. So I'm going to work while it is day. When night cometh, no man can work. I'm going to preach while I can. So when I can't preach, I've done my work. I'm going to holler while I can because as the gray hairs descend upon our lives, we know that things are changing. Somebody say, I am blessed. Run while you can. As a song say, I'm not tired yet. Somebody say, I'm not tired yet. Somebody say, I'm not tired yet. Then you have to believe. Somebody say, Lord, I 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 believe. Some people don't believe in anything. If you tell them that their life is off track, they don't believe it. If you tell your, some of your children that the way they're living is not right, they don't believe it. If you tell your daughter that that lifestyle with Jimmy Lee is going to get her in trouble. She don't believe it. The man told the daughter to don't go out with that boy. Stay home. But Ray Ray had pulled up in the driveway. And he was honking at her. And the dad begged her and said, please don't go. Well, she went anyway. She went anyway with Ray Ray, Pookie, Connie Lee. And Billy Bob, and he took her to a crack house where they were having a party. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the door was kicked in. Guns were drawn. She ended up downtown as a felon. And to this day, if she would have listened to her dad, she would have not been a felon. Somebody say Amen. When somebody tell you the truth, believe it. You got to believe. When somebody email me and tell me, I believe it. I believe it. It's true. You got to believe. You got to stand for something. Or you fall for what? Anything. Somebody say, Lord, I believe. Somebody say, Lord, I believe. Jesus said to many people, according to your faith, be it unto you. You got to believe. Somebody say, you got to believe. Somebody say, you got to believe. You got to believe that the Bible is right. Somebody say amen. Because it'll help your life get on track. It'll help blessings come into your life. Somebody say amen. And when they are, want you to open up some other strange books, you got to keep out of them. Some classes I didn't take in college because it was too much on the other side. Some philosophy classes, they were, my counselor wanted me to take, but I didn't take them because it was too much on the other side. Somebody say amen. And I, you have to go back. Somebody said go back. Go back to what you know is right. So when they said write a paper on the truth, I wrote John 8, 32. You shall know the truth, 
and the truth shall set you free. The professor got mad, gave me a big old F and read. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. But I went back to what I know is right. You got to go back to what you know is true. Go back to what you know is right. And believe that the Lord is on your side. Somebody say, I believe. Somebody say, I believe. Somebody say, I believe. Some Christians have more belief in the Broncos. Than they have in God. Some people have more belief. They can't wait. They've been waiting. I've been waiting all day for the Broncos to play. I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to stay. Because I've been waiting all day for the Broncos to play. The Broncos can't do nothing for you. I ain't got no hate for the Broncos. Some of the boys believe in God. Most of them came from Christian homes. But now they got to the league and got a few dollars and they don't even know nothing about the church. But see, you got to have your faith when everybody else is denying your faith. Somebody say amen. You got to believe when everybody else is doubting. And you always tell God, thank you. Elbow your neighbor and say, neighbor, just say thank you. I close this morning that where... The question on the table, where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? Will you be like some of the people that the funeral home took them and threw them up in the back and they stunk up the neighborhood? And your family just, oh, that's the end of them. No, that's eternity. That's their body. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Your soul is on the inside of you. It lives. And your spirit lives. And it goes back to God. Because it doesn't belong to you and I. And that's why we got to believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And if God allowed you to live another year, and you're not in the ground, and you're not at a funeral home somewhere, you ought to say thank you. If the Lord allowed you to live, and you have a roof over your head, you ought to say thank you. If the Lord allowed you to pick up your feet and walk, you ought to say thank you. If the Lord healed you from cancer, you ought to say thank you. If the Lord blessed your children, you ought to say thank you. If the Lord gave you the strength to pick up your fork and feed yourself, you ought to say thank you. If the Lord has been good to you in any area of your life, you ought to say thank you. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, you would have never made it. I would have never made it. But I'm so glad that I came just to say thank you. When I was sick, the Lord gave me healing. Is there anybody here? When you were sick, the Lord blessed your life. Is there anybody here that ever been in trouble? When you were in trouble, the Lord brought you out. When your son was in trouble, when your daughter was in trouble, when your niece was in trouble, when your cousin was in trouble, when Ray Ray was in trouble, the Lord gave him favor. I am here to say two words. Thank you. Thank you for all your help. You don't have to tell him thank you. I can do it by myself because the Lord's been good. Helped us when we couldn't help ourselves. The Lord sustained us. In the middle of COVID, I preached to a camera. For 18 months, nobody was in the chair. I don't need you to say hallelujah. I don't need you to say glory. The Lord is our help. The Lord is our shield. The Lord is 
our favor. We are blessed. Now somebody say, I am blessed. I came just to say thank you. I came just to say thank you. When I was broke and I couldn't pay my bills, when I was broke and I couldn't pay attention, the Lord gave us help. Somebody say, I am blessed. Say it again. I am blessed. Thank you for all your help. Now just put your hands together. If you want to say thank you, if you want to say thank you, we have a home on high. We have a place beyond the sky. The Lord is our shield. The Lord is our help. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Eternal life is real. Eternal life is real. Eternal life is real. Everlasting life is real. I am blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. Come on and put your hands together and just give the Lord a praise. I praise you for allowing me to preach one more Sunday. I praise you for allowing me to holler one more Sunday. I praise you for allowing me to stand behind this sacred desk one more time. We are blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. Open your mouth and say, I am blessed. Now give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for the blood that run warm in our life. We are blessed. I'm going back to God's house. I'm going back to the church. I'm going back to praise him. I'm going back to worship him. I'm going back to celebrate him. The Lord is my help. The Lord is my shield. The Lord is my buckle. The Lord is the strength of my life. David said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Thank you for all your help. Somebody help me say thank you for all your help. I am blessed. Say it again. I am blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Just give the Lord a hand. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. One more time. Give the Lord a hand clap of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to live one more day. We believe. Somebody say, I believe. Stand on your feet. Say, I believe. Say it again. I believe. Say it again. I believe. I believe the people in Gaza, in Israel, woke up. Some with their arms torn off. Some with blood. Some with their children. But you got to know, they didn't expect that. So don't take it lightly. When you lay your head down the night, just say thank you for one more day. Thank you for one more day. Thank you for one more day. Go in and tuck your children in and say, Lord, thank you for one more day. Tomorrow is not promised. And every day, we need to thank the Lord that we are still here. Somebody say, I'm still here. Elbow your neighbor, say, I'm still here. Come on, elbow somebody else and say, I'm still here. Oh, I'm still here. Still here. Still here. Somebody throw your head back and say, still here. Oh, throw your head back and say, still here. I know the devil threatened you. I know he threatened to take you out. That's why the car wreck happened. I know he threatened to take you out. That's why cancer attacked you. I know he threatened to take you out. That's why your blood pressure is through the roof. 
I knew he threatened to take you out. That's why you had to have the surgery. But you can look up to God and say, Lord, I am still here. Stretch your hand all the way up and everybody say, Lord, I am still here. Come on one more time. Say, Lord, I am still here. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. As a pastor, I don't want you to walk out those doors without knowing, without knowing where you will spend eternity. Don't play games with your life. Don't play games with your future. I don't want you to walk out those doors without knowing where you'll spend eternity. Eternity is real. If I told you about dreams I've had about on the other side, you wouldn't believe it. You said, Pastor, you're a hocus pocus, so I'm not leaving it alone. Because some people wouldn't believe. But I know eternity is real. I know it's real. Somebody say amen. So don't walk out those doors. Somebody say amen. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Check yourself before the devil wreck your life. So this morning, I want to rededicate my life, my family, all that I have to Jesus Christ. If you've never accepted Jesus in your life, it's real. John 1.12 says, but as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. I'm only here because of God's power has kept me alive. Somebody say amen. So if you've never accepted Jesus, then today is your day. The world is in an uproar. And America is facing its greatest threat. Its greatest threat. What's the greatest threat, Pastor? Our leadership fighting. Our leadership not agreeing. That's the greatest threat. And the world is watching. And they know that we're vulnerable. They could attack us at any time. Somebody say amen. Where will you spend your eternity? Don't play games with your life. Don't play games with your kids. Make sure that your sons know about Jesus. I put it in my boys that you got to know Jesus. Jesus. And I would tell them when things would happen, this is the Lord working. So they would know. That is God. Somebody say amen. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I just want to make sure. I want to rededicate my life. Just come on and stand with me at the altar. Don't look around. Don't worry about who's not coming. You just come. I want to rededicate my life to make sure that I'm committed to going to heaven. Somebody say, I'm committed. Maybe you're saying, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but I got mad and I cursed and I said some things, and I want to make sure that God forgave me for it. If that's you, come on down. Don't worry about who's not coming. You come. Because where will you spend eternity? I want to ask all the ministers to come. Every minister, every elder, come. Because I'm accountable for you. I don't want to get in trouble on the other side because I didn't insist that you know Jesus. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Where will you spend eternity? Ask elbow your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if you want to go down front, I'll go with you. And if you got kids, you ought to bring them yourself. Somebody say amen. amen. We got a prayer team and Nikki and her team. Where you at, Nikki? Wave at me. You want extra prayer? It's okay. Somebody say amen. Then I'm going to use my pastor authority. I want every man to come and stand with me at the altar. Because men, we get mad. 
Every man, come on. Y'all come in closer. Y'all come in closer. Come on in closer. Come on in closer. Come on in closer. Come on. I want to make room for my men. I want every man. Because we struggle with trauma. We struggle with failure. We struggle with issues. And we don't tell nobody. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to be sure. Where will you spend eternity? Fall on me. Oh, no. See, God says that he's going to hold the pastor accountable. So I have to make sure. If you want extra prayer, we got a team. Nick and her team will pray with you. It's okay. Let's be sure. Help your neighbor say, you better be sure. Don't worry about who's not coming. You be sure. It doesn't say, where will y'all? It says, where will you look at yourself did you curse somebody out did you get mad did you not forgive somebody forgiveness will keep you out of heaven are you still mad at your mom are you still mad at your dad are you still mad at your ex are you still mad at your baby mama are you still mad at your baby daddy Somebody say, let it go. 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 Grab the hand of the person standing next to you. Or lay your hand on their shoulder. Let's agree. Father, we come to this altar because we need your help. We're not ashamed to say that eternity is real. We want to make it right in our lives. Everybody say with me, say, Lord, I rededicate, I recommit my life, my family, my children, and all that I have to Jesus. Say with me, I am saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. Say with me, say, Lord, if I have done anything wrong, I'm sorry if I've hurt anybody's feelings. I'm sorry if I've said an out of word. I'm sorry. Thank you for cleansing my life. I am your child. Say it with me. Say, Lord, I believe. Say it again. Lord, I believe. Thank you for all your help. One more time. Thank you. I'm your all your help. Say it with me. Say, Lord, save me. Say it like Peter. Say, Lord, save me. Come on, say it one more time. Say, Lord, save me. One more time. Every man, every lady, help me. Raise your voice and say, Lord, save me from a burning hell. I love you with all of my heart. And I repent. I'm sorry for all my sin. Thank you, Lord, for all your help. In the name of Jesus, I rededicate, I recommit my life, my family, my children, everything that I have to Jesus. I rededicate my house, my spouse, every dollar I have, I rededicate it to you you are the source of my total supply thank you Holy Spirit for blessing my life my life will never be the same say it again my life will never be the same I'm going back to the Lord say it again I'm going back to the Lord one more time I'm going back to the Lord he is my source of total supply. I love you. I praise you for all your help. I rededicate. I recommit my life 
and all that I have. To Jesus, in Jesus' name I pray. Now, boy, your neighbor said, let's go back. Say this song. Oh, anointing. Oh, 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 Say it. Yeah. Oh, 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 If you want extra prayer, see Minister Nick and her team. Let. And let the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, oh. Let me say it quiet. Come on, come on, come on. loved ones and other people that you know that are not saved. Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other name but the name of Jesus. He's the only one that says I go to prepare a place for you. Muhammad doesn't say it. Buddha doesn't say it. Hare Krishna doesn't say it. Jesus said I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you will be there, what? Also. For the loved ones that don't know the Lord, raise your hands as you pray for them. Put the names on the back of your envelope as you give your offering this morning. And everybody say with me, say, Lord, Lord save them. Say it one more time. Say, Lord, Lord save them. One more time. Lord, Lord save them. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for salvation that will come to their life. Say it again. Thank you, Lord, for salvation that will come to their lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Turn around and give somebody a hug and say, I am saved. I am saved. Say it again, I am saved. Yes, say it again, I am saved. Yes, now raise your hand and let's pray for all of our youth and our kids. One more time, everybody say with me. Say, Lord, Lord we, pronounce we pronounce the blessing, the blessing. Over, our children, over our children, over our youth. Over our youth. Take the blinders off. Blinders. Say it again, say, Lord, Lord. take the blinders off. One more time, say, Lord, take the blinders off. One more time, say, Lord, take the blinders off of our children, our youth. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. God is a good God. He loves you, and everything is going to be all right. You may be seated. I have you out in a few minutes. So you can go and pray for your Broncos. Lord, help them. Somebody say, Lord, I believe. Say it again, Lord, I believe. Say it again, Lord, I believe. They're going to need your help today. Lord, I believe. They're going to need your help today. Somebody say, Lord, I believe. I believe. God is a good God. Thank you for, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. And thank you for your mercy. And thank you for all that God has done in your life. Somebody say amen. I'm just so glad that you're here this morning. And just know we carry you in our hearts and we pray for you every day. That God will bless your life. And that God will help you. Somebody say amen. amen. It's a weight to carry people on your shoulder as a pastor. Don't ever take it lightly. You know, people say, Pastor, you make it look easy. Well, you don't know God is carrying them, not me. Somebody say amen. So as you give, not as a debt you owe, but as a seed you sow. Every day I get emails from pastors across the world every week I get an email from Pastor Vaughn in the Philippines going into the villages where there's no technology off the grid winning people to the lost kids, and old people and he said Pastor pray that God provide for us somebody say amen and so just know God loves you and then you have to thank God 
that we are at peace on the shores of America today. Thank God. Because there are pastors right now in Israel whose hearts are bleeding because they don't know what's going to happen to their churches. They don't know what's going to happen to their families. And they certainly don't know what's going to happen to their soldiers. In Israel, if you're at, when you become 18, you have to go to the military. Be male or female. You have, you have, it's mandatory. You have to go to the military. Because they say we are one soldier away from Hitler destroying us again. Or the Hitler spirit. And that's what you're looking at across the shores of America. Somebody say amen. So pray for them. Somebody say amen. Pray for them. And we pray for Pastor David Pellegrini and Rabbi Kokev and all the other pastors that are there. But this morning as you give, supernaturally God will bless your life. Mark chapter 4 verse 26. Please mark it in your Bible. Mark chapter 4 verse 26 to 31. And Jesus said, so is the kingdom of God as a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day. And the seed should spring up and grow up and he knoweth not how. Underline those words, he knoweth not how. Because it's supernatural. It's supernatural. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after that, the full corn in the ear. It's supernatural. When you give into God's kingdom, it's supernatural. Somebody say amen. And as you give, God will give it back to you a thousand times more. It's not a debt you owe, but it's a seed you sow. It's part of my budget, my personal family budget, that we tithe. It's part of my personal budget that I tithe. And I know that there have been things that happened in my life that if it had not been the Lord on my side, I know we would have never made it as a family. Somebody say amen. amen. Job 36 in verse 11. The Bible said, if they obey and serve him, two things, if you obey and if you serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in what? Pleasures. That God will bless your life. Somebody said the Lord will bless your life. Just pray for Israel. God's going to take care of them. Those are his choicest people. He's going to take care of them. Somebody say amen. And he's going to draw them back closer to his bleeding side. But today as you give, not as a debt you owe. I'm giving because I have the privilege of giving. Somebody say amen. I'm giving because not only that, because everything I have, God gave it to me including my education that I paid not one penny for. I paid not one penny for my education. Somebody say amen. And God blessed us. And so, you know, he's a good God. And I'm here to tell you that God will bless your life. That God will take care of you. And that God will give it back to you a thousand times more. Let's just come forward. Give everybody an envelope. Everybody give something because you are blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. You might be struggling, but give something because you are blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed to be able to give. We live in the richest country in the world. How do you know? Leave America and go to Mexico. Leave your resort and get an Uber to take you into the inner workings of Mexico. It is utter slum and poverty and lack you live in the greatest country in the world we went to Israel and we crossed the border in the Jordan man they got oil but they are the one of the poorest country. I beg the Lord please don't leave me here let me get back to Israel let me get back home we spent how many nights were we there two three nights I woke up every morning with that prayer call that Muslim guy. <laughs> Come on, man. Lord, just please get me back to the shores of America. Next time you go to one of these countries, if you're not afraid, get your Uber and go into the inner workings. And you'll see how broke and impoverished they are. That's why they overrun our borders. Because they know they're coming to the greatest place on the earth. And God has blessed America. But it's time for America now to pause and to bless the Lord 
for all his goodness. You owe him. You owe him praise. You owe him thanks. And you owe him a covenant of working, giving your time to the Lord. If you're making out a check, make it payable to Emmanuel Christian Center of ECC. God will bless you and he'll give it back to you a thousand times more. Somebody say, I am blessed. Say it again, I am blessed. Say it again, I am blessed. Say it again, I am blessed. Just go. Just go. Oh, you are blessed. Go to some of the other countries on your cruise. Go off your cruise ship when you get to land and just go around to some of those islands and you will be shocked at what you see. Abject poverty. But in America, we are blessed. I tell you that because often we take it for granted. I took it for granted until I got over in Jordan and man, it was nothing but poverty. And I said, Lord, please get me back home. It's like the movie. What's the name of that movie? Where the guy said, get me back, get me back. Y'all remember that Christmas movie? It's a wonderful life. When he, the guy said, get me back, get me back. I just want to go back. That was my prayer. Lord, please get me back home. Somebody say amen. Thank you for giving. Thank you for giving to the work of the Lord. God, will give it back to you a thousand times more. And you'll help to reach souls and, and reach the lost that you'll never see. But God will bless. Every time I send Pastor Vaughn finances from the church, I know that I'll not see those kids that he'll minister to. I'll not see those as they eat the food. But I know that I'll see them in heaven. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. You never know where your money is going to take. Souls that are bound by the enemy. Let us all stand this morning. Hold your gifts up to the Lord. And everybody, everybody give something. Everybody say with me, say, Lord, I give into your kingdom. I am given for eternity. Say it again. I am given for the lost. Say it again. I am given because I am blessed. I declare no bill can live in my life. I am blessed. Say it with me. I am healed. Say it again. I am made whole. My body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. I am healed, delivered, and set free. I give into your kingdom. I'm going forward in every area of my life. Thank you, Lord, for all that you are in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. If you're giving, come and lay it on the altar as an act of faith. God is a good God.
Oh, God is a good God. Stretch your elbow all the way up. The reason why we lift our hands. The Bible says, first of all, lift your hands in the sanctuary. It's scripture. And the second reason why we do it is we are God's children. And we are saying, hold my hand, lest I fall. Stretch your hand all the way up and say, Lord, thank you for all your blessings. For holding my hand, lest I fall. In Jesus' name I pray. Be in church on Wednesday night. If you come to church for the Wednesday and Sunday for the rest of the year, you watch how your new year will start out. God will bless your life. Make a decision that God will bless you. Please welcome Pastor Calvin Nelson as he pronounced a blessing over our lives. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his son, saying on this wise, Ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be grateful unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, upon you, the children of God, upon you, the people of God. And God said, I will bless them. Father, thank you. Thank you for the message today. Thank you for the messenger today. Thank you for eternity today. Thank you for a home to go to when this life is over, when my heart stops beating, when my blood stops flowing, when my mind stops thinking, there's heaven, there's eternity. You said, I'll go and prepare a place for you. You stop dying, not only for Jesus, hallelujah. You stop dying, not only for your mother, and said, John, behold your mother, but you died, you stop dying for that thief on the cross when you said, today, Today, you'll be with me in paradise. God, thank you for the paradise message today. Thank you for eternity today. Thank you for a home to go to when this life is over. Thank you for taking my sister there. Thank you for taking my mother there. Thank you for taking our loved ones there. Thank you, Lord, for taking us there when it's our time. Thank you. Take us throughout this week. Bless us. Keep us in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. God bless you. in a live stream. You have a blessed week in Jesus' name. All right, man. All right, man. What's up? Come on, brother. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Thank you, man. Cheers.